it's a place where you can go to constantly get your voice out there. And there's so many different uh, podcasts and platforms. You're never going to run out of place to share your message. Marriage, a business deal. How do you feel about that? Like, it, it, you, It's business. It's business? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's business. Yeah, you ever been Marriage married? is business. I think being together isn't. You know what I mean? Like, mm. because think about back in the day, people were married. They were being married to bring wealth together. Yeah. It's like you get married. If you don't got a prenup, it, it, you, you expose, fam. Mm. You expose. And you got kids. It's a, men want to protect, provide, yeah. and be the breadwinners, right? But yeah. really, the money doesn't really mean anything yeah. because that's how we're wired. Yeah, but if you really think about it, hypergamy is a real thing. And naturally, women women just gonna be attracted to a man, or you know, more successful man. So what are you getting out of this hundred six figure mentorship with it? A guy that you can go get the same information for free on YouTube. Well, how could you go get the same? You can't go get what you don't know exists. 100%. You know what I'm saying? So what's what's the value of that? Because I feel like it's unfair or it's, you know, scamming to try to teach or educate someone and you haven't actually got any results. That's what when, college is doing though. Potting, what's the what's the new trend in potting? Like why don't you tell me the new trend in potting? What guests need to understand is when you go into a room, you go into a podcast, or even when you're speaking, it's not about the host at all. The host yeah. doesn't have nothing to do with your episode. It's yeah. your episode. That's awesome. Yeah, so if you pre sell a cover for $47 and 22 people buy it, that's $1,034. That's your first $1,000. A lot of podcasts are making $1,000. And that's fact. We yeah. undervalue ourselves. That's not our fault. It's our environment. We're supposed to think small. That's how it's designed. Black people don't respect humbleness. We like arrogance. We do. Here, we're back with another episode of the Digital Brands Podcast, where we interview digital entrepreneurs, entertainers, influencers, and just anybody with a digital brand online that we want to talk to. So today's episode, we got one of the pod goats, Mr. Brendan Boy, right? I've been seeing you all down my timeline, giving good game on how to monetize online, but I need the people to know who you are, what you do, and how you provide value. You tell me a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, man, I'm excited to be here, bro. Uh, I feel like every time I'm, I'm, I'm coming to the A, we linking up. We linking up, which bro. is great. You know what I'm saying? Um, so basically, bro, um, I'm a digital media entrepreneur. Mm. I also fancy myself as a strategist, mm. and, and essentially, man, when it comes to the podcast, um, I help entrepreneurs and business owners get more exposure by getting on, getting them on podcasts mm. and on on the uh, on a podcast side for the actual podcasters. I'm teaching them how to monetize without brand deal sponsorships or having a large audience. So it's it's uh it's like a two for one. So you're teaching people how to monetize it on podcasts by getting on podcasts, talking about monetizing on a podcast. So essentially, a lot, it's like a oh, essentially, yeah, yeah twisting twisting tying it together, and, and it's working because your proof is in a pudding. Yeah, I mean, po podcast is is um, in my opinion, I think it's still like a blue ocean opportunity mm -hmm. because there's a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners, or just people in general, speakers, you know, uh, authors, they're not really taking full advantage of it. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. gone are the days where you have to go on Oprah or mm -hmm. or Dr. Phil mm -hmm. or Arsenio Hall or, you know, um, The Tonight Show, Jay Leno or whatever. You know, I mean, obviously there are those level of shows, mm -hmm. but you don't need those no more. You can run your own tour. You can go on, you know, now you could just go on podcasts. Like like when Kanye was going crazy, he went on a po podcast. Podcast right? when, it was, when it was somebody dropping. Ty Lopez just went crazy yeah. recently, right? He's coming back in the digital space. Pod, pod run. You know what I mean? What happened with Joe Smith and, and his wife? Mm -hmm. Then now they both doing separate pod runs. They're, they're both doing pod runs. You know what I'm saying? So it's the space that you want to go, but the, the trick is this. When Joe Smith and his wife when not dies now, guess what? They ain't going to be doing no podcast. Why is that? Because they're not looking at it as what it is. It's a if it, it's an infinite outlet. It's a place where you can go to constantly get your voice out there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And there's so many different uh, podcasts and platforms. You're never going to run out of place to share your message. Would that be something that you were like, let's say you see somebody who has motion, they're on a podcast run, you have your team reach out or try to uh, be a brand operator or something on the back end and potentially, let's say, like hitting up Joe or hitting up his wife and saying, yeah. hey, you guys are on a podcast run. You're not monetizing the way you should be. Would, do you see? Do you do that or would so you do that? So this is the thing, right? So I was looking at it. I was actually looking at, at this the other day. So, what they're doing right now, I don't mm. know if it's planned or not. I haven't really been down it look, here. It look, it look crazy. Right? Now, now what she got going on, she she clearly has OnlyFans. So, I'm pretty sure her OnlyFans has spiked in the past right couple now. of days, right? Yeah. So, so she's getting bread. Okay. Now, Joe Smith, 
Um, I don't know what he got going on because he's he's just on podcast. But just think about it: if he had a digital product, mm. or if he had a service, you know, or if he was doing basketball training, but it was digital. Those, or if he just had merch, the numbers would go up. I don't know. I haven't I haven't discovered what he's selling or yeah. if he's selling anything right now. Yeah. I think he's just you know um, giving his side of the story. Yeah. She actually has something that she Something's can monetize because she got the OF. You know what I'm saying? Um, but what's going to happen is that's going to eventually die down. She's not going to go on no more shows. And then he's not going to go on no shows because he he's not using it mm. to monetize. Monetize. It. I, I had um, another athlete that said something similar to me. Uh, one of my clients, his name was uh, Andre Berto. He was a boxer. Yeah, yeah, I met him. He said the same thing. He was going on all these podcast runs, but he didn't have any type of product to push on the back end. Yeah. But then he eventually created a digital product and now a, a boxing class teaching people how to get their hands right. Yeah. And it was because somebody in our space mm -hmm. brought, brought, it to brought it to him, brought it to his attention. Yeah. So, you know, Joe, if you need somebody. Yo, Joe, haul after digital brands, haul, haul, haul after strategists. Yeah. Let's, let's get right. Let's you know what I'm right. saying? What you think about, what you think about Jada and her power run? She got it out for Will or something? Or what you think she was I going mean, Jada, her? Jada, I don't. Would you, would you deal with that if you was Will? Nah, bro. <laughs> nah, but see, this is the thing. I think I think Will Smith has a self esteem issue. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because like no no man in his right mind, in my opinion, you know, would would endure everything that he's enduring. I think he just either wants to really keep the family together. You know what I'm saying? Or he really he really has some codependency on her. Or they may just know something about each other, and it's like, yo, listen. You, you know what I'm saying? The, but Jada is doing what you're talking about. Yeah. She's on a podcast, bro, with that book. Yeah, this is the thing. Jada is not working how it should work because she created a lot of friction. The world loves Will Smith, bro. True. So if if she didn't create all that all that friction, negative mm. friction with the whole, you know, August Alcina and mm. you know, like coming at Will on a red table and all that stuff, like and they just operated as a unit and she released a book. She would have, she probably would have sold hella books. Mm. Cause all she would have had to do was either go on a book run with Will as a tight mm. unit or just go on it and he just support her. Because his book went crazy when he went on the, when he went on the runs. But she has this negative energy around her and she released a book. It don't make sense, bro. What you about what the mean? saying all publicity is good publicity? It is, but her book bombed though. Because people don't uh, like yeah. her right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know? It's different when it's like you said some wild stuff, I'm going yeah. on a run, you know what I'm saying? You're like an antagonist, but you're yeah. kind of cool. It's kind of like Darth Vader. I don't really yeah. people don't really like Darth Vader, but they like yeah. Darth Vader. Yeah. Because he's an antagonist. You know what I'm saying? You find out he's he's uh Anakin Skywalker's dad. You know what I'm saying? You're like, oh man, this is crazy. You're like, I, I don't want to like him, but like yeah. I like him. Nah. But right now, no one really likes Jada Pink Smith right now. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's the problem. So we when confused. when people don't like you, you're not going to, you know, monetize. You're not going to mm. make sales. And I had a couple um, <clears throat> here today. I mean, not today. It was a few days ago. It was the first couple I had. And I, and I asked them this question, you know, is uh, marriage a business deal? How do you feel about that? Like. It, it, are you, it's business. It's business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's business. Yeah, you ever been Marriage married? is business. I think being together isn't. You know what I mean? Like, mm. because think about back in the day, people were married. They were being married to bring wealth together. Like it was like, okay, cool. We're gonna take our son and the daughter. We're gonna like strengthen the family. Like it wasn't. It was. They wasn't getting married for love. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Love is love. Ain't marriage. Love yeah. has nothing to do with taxes, fam. You know what I'm saying? It has absolutely. When the last time you was like, y'all love her, man. Let me let let's get our taxes right. Like yeah. it has nothing to do with taxes. That's what they say is a significant other because it's signed if I can't. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. has absolutely nothing to do with do do with that. And then like when well, you breaking up and like for the guy mm -hmm. in America, it ain't really it ain't really to our um to to our best benefit. Not as you gotta think about. It. Yeah. It's like you get married if you don't got a prenup, it, it you you expose, fam. Mm. You expose. And you got kids. It's a wrap. If yeah. you're making money, right, and you marry, you don't have a prenup, y'all get divorced, she's getting half, and then you got to pay alimony and you got to pay child yeah. support. Yeah. You're getting raped. You know, yeah, I think they say statistically speaking, 86% of divorces are initiated by women, but 93% of alimony are paid by men. So as you said, it's typically not a the best break for us. Yeah, but like when- you, if you think about Janae, Janae May, with her Jeezy on, yeah, see what's going on, she getting the best lawyers 
possible to try to fight this prenup because he put this prenup in place. And I mm-hmm. think they weren't even married that long of a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she putting the best lawyers in place to... You know what's crazy? It's like, how do y'all agree on a prenup and then you and then one of the parties wants to fight the prenup at the end? Then you really know it ain't about what it's about. Yeah. It's like if... Because like Kanye, right? Why he got to pay Kim child support? They both mm. wealthy, as, wealthy as F. He shouldn't have to pay a child support. Why? Why? She she good. What she need him extra money for? Yeah. Why he got to pay? I think I think when he got when they got divorced, he was paying her like two hundred thousand a month or something. Why, fam? They, they can just go get a brand deal or something. Like, why is he paying her two hundred thousand a month for what? They both wealthy. It's the system don't make sense. It, it doesn't. I have seen it on my timeline too. It was uh, I don't know something's happening in the news, obviously, but I've been seeing people talking about it, yeah. like all of these men who have to pay child support and they're still in like the children's lives and they still have to have to pay child support. So it's What are you paying child support for? Yeah. Do you want to get married? Man, it's a tough one, man. I I I don't know. I can't say my thoughts today, my thoughts today is that I'm still I'm still trying to figure out if it's the best like decision is business yeah. wise too. You know, yeah. I'm still looking at it. So still let me so let me ask you. Hold on, let me tell you because oh, reason yeah. why reason why is because I've my last two girlfriends that I had dynamics with Completely different. Mm. One was making like 400K a month, right? One just, a, you know, standard, you know, nine to five, I say maybe 70, 80K a year. And at the time, the chick I had that was dating 400, that was making $400,000 a month, I realized I actually had a little, as they say, like I was more, a little bit intimidated. Yeah. I ain't gonna even lie. I'm like, damn, man, she making $400,000 a month. Yeah. Like, what the hell I'm gonna do with her? She's talking about going to Turks and Caicos yeah. and this and that. I remember she hit me up trying to go out of uh, out of the country. She's like, yeah, the trip gonna be 18000 per person. And uh, she was like, uh, I'm gonna pay for you though. I'm like, man, you gotta pay for me, man. I'm, I'm gonna pay, I don't worry about it. But it's like, damn, you making 400000 a month. Yeah. But this is the thing also, right? And then we can, I guess we can go back on the master piece a little bit. Men want to protect and provide yeah. and be the breadwinners, right? But yeah. really, the money doesn't really mean anything. Mm-hmm. Because if the money's fine, you could you could do what you want. Yeah. She could do what you want. Your family could do what you want. Like you're like I, I assume, right, we're out here working, making things happen because you want financial freedom. For sure. Because then then you don't have you're not really thinking about your choices are not dictated about the amount of things. Mm. It's kind of like what Myron what Myron talks about. Everything's an offer. So mm. if you make an offer, you know the same the same offer you made that might pay for a stick of gum is the same offer that you can make that'll pay for like a Rolls Royce. It's, it's just an offer using your mind to create mm. something that you can sell and monetize. So when you're not worried about money, what are you really worried about? You know what I mean? So mm. so. Let's say the roles were were reversed, mm-hmm. and then you was at the four hundred thousand a month, mm-hmm. and then she wasn't. She was making whatever she's making, but it wasn't yeah. four hundred thousand dollars a month. Yeah. You wouldn't even think about nothing. You'd be like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah it's eighteen thousand. You probably wouldn't even tell her the price. Yeah, let's just go do it. But it's different, though. But it's different, though. Yeah. But why is it different, though? You tell me. What do you think? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because that's how we're wired. Yeah, but if you really think about hypergamy is a real thing, and naturally, women women just gonna be attracted to a man. Or you know, more successful man. Um, you know, it's it's those certain attributes. So why? So you think that she wasn't as attracted to you because she was making more than you? No, she said something that was interesting because she says like, "Yo, you don't have to just leave with money." Mm-hmm. You know, like money is not the only way as a man. But that's what leave. I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. But United States is is crazy out here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I agree with that. Because look yeah. back. Okay, let's back in the day, right? There was all mm-hmm. there was all, there was obviously men that, that were wealthy. But there was also also men that were like champions, like, you know, mm. fighting or soldiers or, you know, craftsmen or blacksmiths or mm. the most intelligent ones or whatever. That wasn't all money, but they were still leaders. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Now it's just different because you can we can literally create something and become like you can become a millionaire pretty fast. Yeah, in different state of time. Like you mentioned Myron for the people who don't who don't know you talking about you talking about Myron Golden. Myron right? Golden, yeah. And I seen it said that you pay almost a hundred, a six figures, whatever it is, to be a part of his his mentorship. Yeah, and that's a pretty a pretty hefty ticket. Yeah, you, you making four hundred k a month? Nah, yeah, but, <laughs> no, pretty, sure. but I'm pretty definitely sure. in the five percent. Okay, 100%. all right, top five percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of money to spend for a relationship. All right, no, uh, it's not. It's not a relationship. It's mm-hmm. not a lot of money to spend. Mm-hmm. Man, so for, so I'll, we. 
I, I don't think so. You don't think so? Mm -mm. I, I'm curious to why you don't think so. So what are you getting out of this hundred six figure mentorship with it? A guy that you can go get the same information for free on YouTube. Well, how could you go get the same? You can't go get what you don't know exists. Hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? So whether you pay ten thousand, fifty thousand, a million dollars for something that would change your life, what's what's the value of that? You know what I'm saying? If I told you something that you would never, that would literally change the way that you think, mm -hmm. you can never go back to the previous moment or previous thought. Mm -hmm. That's worth whatever it was. And that's how it was for me. Like, I quit real estate once I realized that I could make more money selling digital products. It was a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I didn't need mad time to figure that out. I was like, okay, let me think about this. Be in the car, drive over here, drive back over here, put a deal together, right? Follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. Mm -hmm. Deal might fall through, might not fall through, whatever. Close it. Okay, that took 30, 60, 90 days of my, of my time. Mm -hmm. 20K, right? Or you can learn a skill and then you can monetize a skill digitally, right? Mm -hmm. Through education, because that's really what digital is, right? Yeah. It's, it's information and yeah. education. And you could close a 20K product in an hour. Hey creators, when it comes to content creation, are you feeling overwhelmed because your videos are a drag? Maybe you're spending too much time editing videos when you should be working on your business. Your brand deserves better and you'll need your time back. Introducing Podchop. We'll help you grow your brand and have more polished, professional and consistent content. We will do everything. All you need to do is create and submit your raw podcast or short form videos. We'll change your videos into more savable, shareable and engaging content. Sign up now. Start getting amazing videos fast. It, it changed for me. And, and, and that was like, my first online product was like 300 bucks. What, what was it? Uh, it was teaching people my morning routine because I knew my mor I knew that my morning routine, if you did it for 30 days, it would change the way that you think. Mm. So I just sold people that because people need accountability. 100%. So, will you, so what I say a lot of times too is like when you have people try to sell um, education or services, a lot of them I, I say focus on getting a product, selling a product first, actually mm -hmm. getting, getting results because I feel like it's unfair or it's, you know, scamming to try to teach or educate someone and you haven't actually got any results. That's what well, college is doing though. True. It is true to an extent because a, per a person, like a professor, that's a whole other story. But the point I was trying to get to was um, with you, with you doing your digital product, right? Yeah. And you felt confident enough to actually educate people on that. Didn't you, I was reading somewhere either a podcast video I've seen, didn't you run up millions before you even... Like got into the yeah, digital product space? In a clothing company, in yeah. In a clothing company. But bro, I'd had no mentorship. Uh -huh. I didn't know what I was doing, right? Uh, we had bad budgeting, bad accounting, no accountability. It was crazy that we uh -huh. did what we did. You know what I mean? And, and we actually launched, we launched a um uh the jogger sweat. Like we created that that um that patent, but I mean well, we created that style that we did not get patented. What is it called? The jogger, like the jogger. So jogger sweats, okay, or or just jogger pants. Like we created that, but we didn't get a mechanical patent. We didn't even know that existed. So that was the initial point where you kind of came from a rags of riches, or like what was the background? What story did you already kind of have? No, money? so like, so so you mean as far as that I have money going into the going clothing into company? Yes, yeah, go. So going into the clothing company. And this is how ignorant that I was, and ignorance mm -hmm. in, in terms of just not knowing what you don't know, which is mm -hmm. why you asked me earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, would I pay, you know, what's the price of that? And I was like, mm. this, it, that's worth it to me. Yeah. Right? Okay. So my grandmother, my grandmother passed away when I was uh, 16. Okay. So one of, one of the um, tools that she left me for financial um, uh, legacy was a life insurance policy. Right. Now, I didn't know what that was. I was 16. I just remember she passed away. I went to Charles Schwab office. There was a white dude there, no hair on the top, you know what I'm saying, hair on the sides. He was like, yo, you got 150000 Now, this is the thing. Without a father, without mentorship, right, without, uh, you know, I had a basketball coaches, but they was rotating, so I didn't mm -hmm. really have a stable man figure in my life. No one in my, no one in my family had financial literacy at the time. So no one was educated enough to be like, all right, listen, 16-year-old boy, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got 150000 I know you're not gonna listen to us anyway. So here, let's let's just blow 75 and let's take this other 75 and let's put it back into what created the 150. Because 
your grandmother left you 150 is because she used this tool that was able to create some wealth in the future. So on her passing, it lets you, a, a, you know, it leaves a benefit, mm. right? So now with insurance tools now, you know, you can have a life benefit. So you can use insurance as something that can generate revenue for your family in the future, right? The Rockefellers did it. So if I would have knew that information, I would have blew 75 because, you know, I would have did what I did, toys, whatever, cars, yeah, yeah, motorcycles, yeah. whatever, have fun trips. But that other 75 could have been growing. But who's there to tell someone about financial education if no one in your family has financial ed- education? So that's where, you know, some of the wealth came from. And I was able to buy a house. So, I, you know, I had equity in a home. So um, I basically funded our clothing company. It was me and a business partner. And um, he had the idea. I had the hustle and the energy. So he, um, he was the creative director and a designer. He did all of that stuff, and I just did everything else. And I was figuring it out as I go. So I'm talking about marketing, selling, business development, seeding, you know, um, everything. Everything other than what I deemed as creative, yeah. which I learned later that that's, the only, that's not the only way you can be creative, mm-hmm. I was able to do. So, like, you know, you got Childish Gambino, Chris Brown, Justin Bieber, um, Wiz Khalifa, um, J. Cole, these people um, wearing your stuff? Wearing the stuff. Multiple athletes. K. Cuddy. You know what I'm saying? Was um, IG uh, popping at this time? This, this is way before IG. Yeah, no. IG was popping. Okay. I, IG was like new. It was just, new. you know, okay. early IG. Uh, I got a chance to meet Pharrell. Gave him a shirt. So that yeah. was iconic. You know what I'm saying? I think I still got the video. I got to find it though. You be, or you a picture. Be, you be networking. I'll be seeing on your page, your page. You be in the rooms. Traveling. Yeah, man. It's important. And the thing is, you got to just add value naturally. Yeah. But you add value when you're knowledgeable. Yeah. So one of the most knowledgeable people that I know from the space when I just watch is like Ty Lopez. He knows everything. So if you watch Ty Lopez yeah. like interviews, he just be bringing the information that he just got downloaded from the sky, bro. He just knows. I've never watched one one interview from Ty. Ty Lopez. Okay, so there's an interview I'll send you. I think it's Ty Lopez and Brad Lee, a recent one, a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. You should watch that one. It's pretty good. Okay. Um, but uh, you have to be be someone that's. Educate that searches for knowledge mm. that you can always add. And I think, you know, what's bigger than what's greater than money, I think what, what's gonna save you and save us is knowledge, bro. And yeah, knowledge is free, but the packaging of said knowledge isn't free. Mm. The the um the um sequences of the knowledge isn't free. Cause everything that we want to do already exists. Mm. Right? It's, it's already out there. Already You're not creating there. anything that doesn't already exist. You might be putting things together and then out of it comes something, you know? Or you might... Okay, did, did Christopher Columbus discover America? Was America already here? He was out here looking for the new land, yeah. but the new land had already existed. There was people on the land already. So our ideas are already out there, you know? Like, we were just robbing on the glasses, like these, yeah. like these augmented... Yeah. But technically, that, that reality was already... It already exists. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I believe that if you're going to pay somebody or pay for something and you can get it faster or it could be in a sequence that you can kind of go through the steps, you get the result a lot quicker, it's worth it to me every single time. Do you, do you have, because I hear this saying a lot in, in our industry as far as uh, you got to pay to pay attention. You think yeah. you would have valued it as much if you were to just have somebody, one of the people, your friends or a business partner was able to get you in the room and you were just able to nah. get the same information for free? I, yo, the sad thing is I try this all the time, bro. I have friends. Um, I give my friends a lot of the stuff that I pay six figures for. They don't do it. It's because they ain't paying they ain't paying the money. I literally told a friend of mine who's a speaker, I said, yo, this is how you can get leads. Mm. Do this, 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 and this. She ain't do it. You do it. No. Was was potting like the main thing that they needed to do? No. It was just like I was we just talking about content creation, but I'm okay. like, do these things. If she didn't so do it. So between content creation, so you're talking about content creation as far as uh do you believe you should document or create? Which one? I think which? you should do both. Okay. Like I just got the meta glasses. Okay. That's documentation. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get the um uh the DGI Pocket Three documentation. I think it's important to do both. I'm gonna put myself on a tour. One of the one of the um, components of the tour is documenting the actual tour. Mm. 
Because if I can go on tour and educate, and I could do a live podcast, I could, you know, let's say I speak out of school or something, mm -hmm. right? But then I could document all of those things and then put that out on YouTube in real time while I'm doing it. It's just going to elevate everything that I'm doing. And then people are going to tune into what I got going on. Document documentation is huge. Yeah. yeah. And it's the easiest form of content creation. Like, we're documenting this right now. Yeah. Right? And then what can we do? There's so many things that we can do afterwards, with this asset to, afterwards. To, 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 what can we do afterwards? So I had um, a guest. Yeah. And I remember he was talking about the show. I was fairly new. I probably only had like three episodes in. Mm -hmm. And he was adamant about how valuable after the show was, yeah. right? As far as repurposing. So if I'm a, a person who's on a podcast run, I go and do episodes, what, what should I do to further... Um, get those videos to last longer to make me more yeah. money like any strategies on how to do something like that yeah well well first off i wouldn't look at it just as after i would look at it as in totality okay so when you go on a show there's a lot of things you can do so i'll give you an example so ask me another question um another question um yeah. it, 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 it can anything? be anything yeah it can be any, yeah uh potting what's the what's the new trend in potting like why don't you tell me the new trend in potting so that's a friction point right there. Like mm -hmm. I just created friction. So what does that do? That creates a moment mm -hmm. that later we can use. Mm -hmm. But I but I drove that. So like if you look at interviews with like Kevin Hart, he does it all the time. Mm -hmm. Like he'll take moments and then he'll control the moments. And then later you have a clip that will probably do better than the other clips mm -hmm. because instinctually he's like, all right, I'm looking for the pockets where in which I can create the moment. a moment. I can yeah. create some friction back and forth yeah. that then can be a tangible asset that I can use. So it's like, what guests need to understand is when you go into a room, you go into a podcast, or even when you're speaking, it's not about the host at all. The host yeah. doesn't have nothing to do with your episode. It's yeah. your episode. If you decide not to show up, either the host is not going to do the episode or he's going to replace you with another guest. That means you're a lot more valuable than you think that you are. Mm. Even if you're going on a free podcast or even if you're going on a paid podcast, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm controlling the interview if I want to, Yeah. right? So with that type of power, you got to understand what's the message that you want to get out. Mm -hmm. So even though the host may have the questions that they want to ask, you can still get your message across the way you want to get it. You know who does that yeah. a lot too? Brittany Reiner. Is that how you say her last uh, name? Yeah, yeah, she does. She, does she, she knows what she's doing. Yeah. She's creating moments like the time she threw water on a dude or something. Guy, yeah. Like she knows what she got going on. Yeah. She's, she's not slow. You know what I mean? She's very intelligent. Girl. She's, she's very got, intelligent. Just got picked up on. I seen her uh, hip hop. Wives of LA or something like yeah. that. And she's I'm just listening looking at her talk. I'm like, damn, like her, her vocabulary, she's she's like, she's on it. You can tell she's sharp, really witty, you know, a little dency, but you know. I mean, but she knows she, she, knows, she knows she's she, doing. She knows she's so doing. so it starts during the interview. So like knowing knowing the pockets that you can utilize mm -hmm. to create moments, right? Um, making sure your messaging is getting out there. Making sure you have a call to action. Not only having a call to action, making sure that call to action is sending them somewhere. So, you know, before you guys get out of here, I mean, before we get out of here, text this number, go to this domain, and then have something to actually give them because now you're going to ingratiate yourself by giving them something. Give them something for free? Something for free. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to get into your ecosystem. Now you got the data. You can control the direction of the information flow at that point. Do you think, let's say, giving them something for free versus giving them something for a dollar? where I actually had a transaction, if I'm having a transaction from them, mm -hmm. you feel like that person lead score is higher, more valuable, or am I, should I focus on just getting as many emails and contacts as possible or, or either one? Like, which one should I focus so on? You, so I have a value chart. I can okay. show you the value chart. But basically, if you get them in for free to something, then just bump them up for something else for sale. Because getting the data is more important than getting that first dollar. The data is worth more than a dollar. But if you get the data and you say, hey, listen, um, you know, thanks for thanks for joining the, um, you know, our community. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to give you this amazing offer. It's only a dollar and it's going to be something that's 100 times more valuable than a dollar. But you got them in anyway. So for the percentage of people that don't take the dollar, you still got them. So you can still monetize them later. But if you put that dollar on the front end, you probably have less people taking it. Just even though it's a dollar. Do you split test that? Like what's yeah, I would so split far test it. You, you would or, or what has been your experience? What's been like data wise? What's been your best lead magnet? Free community, uh, free guide, uh, free training, free master class. Because there's so many different so, lead so, magnets that we So use. for me, it's been uh, a free training. Okay. And, and I'm about to experiment. So I'm doing a free training right now. 
I have I have um uh this podcast mastery asset list so 17 things that you can do to really maximize your podcast guesting experiences okay. so i'm giving that away well actually no that's gonna be nine dollars i'm testing okay. that um and then the uh the third thing is gonna be i've been uh playing around with this idea of like i mentioned ty lopez earlier right i mentioned who else was going on who else went on a crazy power run recently um Let's just say Andrew Tate. Mm. Just people that have been going on podcast runs. Mm. I'm going to correlate their the podcast that they was on and then give give those contacts away for free as a lead magnet. Contacts, the pods? Yeah. The, okay. No, that's hard. Mm -hmm. That's hard. I'm gonna, Just for the leads, you know, to, to bring in the leads. Bring so in. I'm going to give them the contacts so they can come into the ecosystem. And, and them then, being in your ecosystem, what's the value add for them over just doing it themselves? Like a person because, just wants to go Well, out. for some people... They w they should do it themselves, and it right. would be great for them to do it themselves. But most people aren't going to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to give them something that's super valuable so they can come in, and then they'll go through our flow, and then our setters will call them up and say, hey, listen, I know you just got Ty Lopez's top 10 podcast hosts, you know, mm -hmm. the podcast that he was just on. You know, uh, would you like our team to help you get on podcasts similar to that? Mm -hmm. You know, and then we can close them on a deal or something like that. We're going to test that out. I like that. Yeah. And, and for... Somebody who's interested in getting on a pod run, what would you suggest? Should you suggest they just go out and they get better through their potting? Or do you have some, because you have a pod agency. Right? Yeah. Is it a training program where you teach them how to be the most prepared for pods or is it just so, connecting them? So it started off just guessing them. Okay. But during the process, because we had the agency for about a year now. So during the process, I discovered that there's other things that they need. They need a little bit of messaging coaching. They need a little bit more confidence as they, as they're delivering their messaging. They need they need more insight when it comes to strategy. You know what I'm saying? Um, so we have we we're providing that um, that call to action funnel. We're providing that. You know what I mean? So we're adding these other things, and I'm I'm always thinking about other ways that I can add more value to that experience so they can have more things to take away from. But we also have a DIY option too. They mm. can just take these things and do it themselves. Okay, so for instance, um, I was telling, we, oh, like, right? I was telling them that banks have uh, an internal credit score. Yeah. Mentally, do you have a internal credit score when it comes to like podcasts? Like what's a rubric of what's a good podcast to go on and what's a bad podcast to go on? Is it, are you looking at it from a, is it just about visibility and just jump on any podcast mm -hmm. possible or this podcast is going to potentially not be a good look? Yeah, you yeah. Have that in your well, I think before? I think there are always different platforms that may or may not necessarily be a good look. Like for instance, it may not make sense for me to go on a podcast about fishing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It may not make sense. However, it may make sense for me to go on a podcast that has a bunch of OnlyFans girls because there's a lot of attention over there, and then I could probably share a lot of the information that I have to help them. To help them. Mm. Whether or not they receive it, that Discord is going to make for good content. You know, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I personally don't think it's a bad place for you to go when you have an opportunity to get on. More eyeballs. Uh, yeah, because it's not about what the show is going to do for you. It's about what you're going to do with the content. So if you know what to do with the content, I think you'll be good. Mm -hmm. You know, most, most guests will go on a show mm -hmm. and they don't do nothing. Yeah. And then they hope that the show is going to turn them up. But it's not the show's responsibility to turn it up. It's your responsibility, your responsibility to leverage your place on that show to then turn you up. You have any turn offs or turn ons about a podcast? Like just yeah, I don't yeah. like I don't like uh, hosts that overvalue their shows and they just want to get money. Mm. Like I had to tell a couple of hosts, like Yo, bro, your show's not worth a thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? But if you package it into a VIP package, I can see how you can get a thousand. So sometimes I have to educate them, which I don't mind. Like, what's, this, what's a VIP 